Hi, I'm Willie and welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I am so glad you came to visit. And tonight we're going to talk about Unify 5.6.29 Stable being released. It is available out in the repo. So if you have a cloud key or you use the Debian Ubuntu repo to manage your Unify installation, you should be able to upgrade that way. So let's take a look at this real quick. And we're gonna we're gonna go over to actually we're gonna go over to the cloud key. We're gonna start the upgrade. Then we're gonna come back and look at the release notes and talk about some problems that some of you may have had. So first of all, we're over here at our cloud key, and uh, here's something that that I I didn't know until like last week uh, and that I found out, and this is pretty cool. But if you're in Google Chrome and you come to this screen, this screen right here where it says the connection is not private, you get a certificate error. Error. You can actually type bad idea and it will actually go ahead and forward you to it instead of doing the clicking, you just type bad idea. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but uh, So we're going to go ahead and we're going to log into our Unify, which is currently 5.6.26. And uh, And as always, we're going to go down here to settings and we're going to go to maintenance and I am going to do a settings only backup. So that's done. And then I'm going to come down here and now they're talking about possibly releasing a new version of the, the cloud key firmware that you'll see because I, I want to show you this discussion that's happening. So you'll see that I'm not, it says that this is up to date on the cloud key firmware. So I've had a few people actually contact me and say, hey, look, I'm trying to upgrade my cloud key. What's going on? It's taking forever. It's not working. It's because there's a little bit of an error on the backside. It's got to do with, uh, I believe, uh, yeah, GPG keys. Uh, and I will show you how to fix that real quick. So right now, I don't think that mine's going to upgrade. It says that this is available. Uh, and maybe it is fixed. May, so maybe we'll get to a click apply update and this will work. So we'll come back and check on this in a second. If this doesn't work, we will uh, apply the fix real quick. So what is new? I, I just want to go over a couple of these things um, that are in the release notes. So there was a couple of things. Um, there were probably in these release notes over and over, but I maybe just maybe just soaked it up this time when I read it. This is interesting that uh, it says, do not choose the skip option when running the migrate site wizard. If you do, your devices may end up in a weird state. Like Texas, Austin, Texas, keep it weird. Isn't that what's going on down there? I, I'm just, uh, I don't know what a weird state is. I'm assuming it's some sort of a limbo where they're adopted, not adopted. I don't know. Uh, you must be running 0.6.4 cloud key or later. And also, I believe this has gone into effect before, but this is something that's very important and it has tripped up uh, people in the past. So if you have changed the, the controller settings and you are running on the non-out-of-the-box ports, so 8443, 8080, all that stuff, if you change those to other ports, and those ports are below less than 1024, the controller will not start because it does not, it no longer runs as root. It's a non root user that Unify runs as. And those are privileged ports. Anything less than 1024 are privileged. And since this runs as a non root user, you, the, the controller will fail. So if you're having that problem, keep that in mind. Some bug fixes that are out here. Um, improved support of delete, fixed an issue where the Unify switch management VLAN would reset to defaults when you upgraded the controller. That is extremely important. And they added a model end of life pending warning. So as far as I know, the all the access points, and I've got UAPs all the way back to 2013, and even those models have only been feature frozen, but they're, they're still supported. I even actually just saw that the Outdoor Plus, which has been feature frozen for well, almost two years, I think, 
uh, they release new firmware. So, I mean, even though it's feature frozen, they're still improving the firmware, making sure that things are secure and things like that. You know, Ubiquity is not a Cisco, you know, and they they don't, uh, I don't know, I can't say enough about the support model. It's, it's leaps and bounds over some of the other companies that are out there. So, end of life, I do know that the Pico, and let me see if I have a Pico around here. Yeah, well, you can see the big antenna sticking up right there is actually on a, a Pico, and you used to be able to load the Unify firmware on a, a Pico, and you can still do that, but you can't go past a certain controller revision. Uh, but the Pico is actually end of life and is being replaced with the Mesh M product. So let's uh, real quick go back and look at the rest of this. So anyway, uh, back to that, I think that it's awesome and uh, that Ubiquity is end of end of lifing and making those hard announcements because we need to support them by buying newer product. Um, otherwise, how are they going to continue to get the revenue in to be able to, to keep, you know, I mean, we pay them nothing. They put all this work into the software um, and all the other services that they give us for free. And all we do is buy the hardware. And I don't know, I, you know, I, Upgrade your hardware, buy new Ubiquity hardware. When they tell you it's end of life, we should welcome end of life and, and do some upgrades. All right, so uh, they have drag and drop optimizations, fixed a missing action button after enabling cloud access. They updated the Nano HD name. If you haven't seen the Nano HD, it's in the early access store. If you're not a beta member, go sign up for that, and you can check that out. It is a... It looks like a light, so it uses the same mounting plate as a light, but it's an HD radio, so it's got a lot of throughput, can handle a lot more users. There are several device management improvement options, uh, various back-end improvements, probably some security and things like that. It's always a good idea when Ubiquity tells you these updates are available. Maybe lag back a day or two to see what's happening, like what we've got going on with this. So you, you can see that we're back here at the Apply Update screen. So we're going to have to apply the, the fix. And then there's a whole slew, whole slew of firmware upgrades that went along with this. So it's always a good idea to make sure that you've got the latest upgrade. Yeah, update open SSL, update curl. Um, you can see there's all kinds of things. Crack AP mode patches for 802.11 LR. So make sure that you get up to date. And, and I'm not sure if this is the same version of firmware that came out on 2.6 or not. We have to go back and check that. But anyway, it's always a good idea to upgrade when you can. So our upgrade is obviously not going to work the way that we wanted it to. And I believe that at some point, so if you do this, you're going to get the 5.6.29 upgrade, but I believe at some point in the near future, they're going to release the 8.8 cloud key firmware, which will also address this problem. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and we are going to do the workaround. So we are going to bring up Putty and we're going to get into our cloud key. And we're going to hop over here and we are going to run these commands that Mike D posted. So we'll go ahead and run that. It's going to run through the commands. Looks like everything is going to work out okay for us here. And I don't. I don't know if I uh, talked about how important it is to run a UP. You should run a UPS on your network gear anyway. Storage, anything with storage should have a battery backup condition power. All right, so now we've got two options. It says that we could do the install this way or we could go, we can leave the shell and go back to the user interface and do the upgrade. So let's refresh this guy. And we'll go down and let's see what happens when we hit apply update. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and we're going to see if the update happens. So I uh, had some blinking lights behind me. I noticed and looks like the upgrade went through. 
and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I have some, like, of the original UAP uh, LRs, I think, maybe, or at least some of the original UAPs from back in the day, and we're going to hook some uh, devices up to this next time. I've got all kinds of other videos that are coming out, but at some point here, we're going to take a look at that end of life thing, because I, I think that's pretty cool. So, it uh, looks like our upgrade is done. We are up to date. So that is awesome. And uh, that's really what I want to talk about. If you haven't upgraded, you know, you should probably take the time to do that. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you need a cloud key or UPS or anything else from Amazon, you can use those links down there. Uh, appreciate you being here. And as always, we'll see you in the next video.